Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video we're gonna do it in a different uh, style and manner. As you can see the title is about how I find my clients because I got this request in my uh, email inbox recently. So get your drink, coffee, tea or something of your choice like hot chocolate because it's the season and let's start with going through the steps on how I find my clients. Let's go! But before we start, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get notification next time I'm uploading and also leave a like if you find this video useful. As a backstory, I quit my job in 2021 and I decided to give a freelancing a go. I took the last months of the year to um, search myself and think about how I'm going to position myself as a freelancer and I did check some uh, freelance platforms and I started freelancing in January 2022 for a year and eight months approximately after which I opened my own company here in Croatia and started my own business. And thanks to this freelancing experience I feel more confident in working with clients one-on-one. Usually when you see these videos of how people get clients or how they operate their business, they jump straight to create a portfolio, show your projects, uh, seem expensive, reach out to other people, slide in their DMs and uh, hunt them down on LinkedIn and stuff like that. But before you do all that, I would give you my process and how I do it and how I approach my clients, although it's not a really direct uh, approach. but Long story short, I will just give you my perspective on how to find clients. And disclaimer, I have never asked anybody how they find their clients uh, without without myself having clients or how to say, uh, with the in desperate need to find out how they do it. Uh, I always asked in the beginning when I started only Google. That was the only uh, input that I had on how to find clients and later, of course, how to maintain clients and how to communicate with clients chat gpt but other than that i have never asked anyone anyone in real life hey how do you find your clients uh, with the intent to learn from them because for everyone that's different and uh, depending on your field and the service and product that you provide the type of clients that you want to work with that will determine where and how you will search and find your clients now it's time to get into the stages of how to find your clients and let's start with inner work. My channel is about design and web development without code but also about self-improvement and I'm really really passionate about that and I believe that nothing goes and comes externally, It everything for me everything starts from inside and what you think and what you believe and what you actually project will come back to you so I believe that the inner work is really important and you need to get clear and with yourself of what you want and what you want to offer and what you want to achieve giving these services and selling these products Saying that, you need to know yourself on a really deeper level, know your strengths and weaknesses, your skills and talents, what are you naturally good at and what can you provide easily without needing extra certification to your clients. What can you give them that other people can't? After you settle that with yourself, who are you and what you offer, it's time to really think about who you really want to work with, how your perfect not perfect but ideal maybe and dream client in you know you can imagine it, it as a friend collaborator how they look like and uh, how the whole collaboration feels when you work with them is it fun is it casual is it very strict and professional is it chill or is it uptight is it chaotic is it organized Everything from meeting them on a discovery call to starting the project, mid project, and handoff. I'm talking about design. How this whole process interacting with your dream client, ideal client, feels like. Think about and visualize who that person is. What their what are their values? Create even a persona if you like, because this is a problem that we're solving and it's a great idea to create a persona of your ideal client and get to know them on a deeper level as a target audience uh, to which you will 
talk and present yourself. So think about who they are, what they like, what they don't like, what are your common beliefs and styles and um, how to say, what is your common ground, what connects you and what it, uh, what values bring you together. Then after you kind of create their own personality and imagine them, think about are they uh, big businesses or are they B2C? Like, are they selling to a client customer or are they just independent and want to sell products? Are they selling services? Are they coaches? What type of people they are and what is their business about? What kind of impact they are making with their business and how would you like to help them achieve their own goals? Are they a local eco-friendly store that sells really amazing products for mothers and women and children? Are they uh, like very luxurious spa orientated uh, beauty salon what they do what about their business makes you go oh i can't wait to get my hands on this project and start helping them create their own dreams after knowing the what and to whom are you going to uh, sell your services or your product think about the why I know you probably think, of course I know why, I want to have money and live my life uh, freely and have some uh, freedom and, I don't know, travel the world or whatever. But if you have time, uh, don't get this question as a BS question. Just think about it and take your time to really introspectly, like look in introspection and think about why are you doing all this? What is your internal deep, deeper motivation behind starting your own business, freelancing or selling your services or products? And then I will tell you why your why is important for your clients. Now, why do you have to make sure you're clear with yourself why you are venturing on this uh, entrepreneurship or freelance journey? First of all, because if you are honest with yourself, you can easily be honest with others and your message and your offer will truly speak to those people that you are targeting and wanting to collaborate with. Because if you are trying to pretend or act in a way that is not truly your honest true self and these are not your actual intentions, people will see eventually through you and that will in the long run not help you run a successful and good business. So make sure you are aware of your goals and intentions before you even start and check uh, with yourself every now and then, maybe half a year, are you doing the same things that you wanted in the beginning or do you want to shift? Is your mission, values and goals the same that we were in the beginning of uh, opening your business? And make sure that you laid out all these things on a piece of paper so you can see clearly uh, how your whole brand is presenting itself on the outside. Also maybe you have a difficult time presenting yourself as a brand and as a business uh, mostly because you haven't done that inner work and you look like a template on the outside. Yes, that's true, because if you don't have any storytelling on your website or any real or at least passion projects that you're really passionate about and your personality is nowhere to be found, uh, the clients will see that and they will not want to collaborate with you because they are looking for someone who is really eager to solve problems, someone who knows what they're doing, someone who can explain and present and justify their decisions whether they are design decision, developer decisions, or sales, marketing, or whatever professional you're trying to present yourself as. So make sure that you are clear with yourself who you are, what you do, why you do it, and with who you want to do that. Now, after you have programmed yourself as a software from the inside, it's time to uh, give your external efforts on the outside and equip yourself with the hardware, right? When you know what you're offering, being that, for example, me selling no-code websites and UX UI design, I then choose to use Figma as my tool 
content management systems without coding as Wix, Webflow, GoDaddy, Shopify, Squarespace and all solutions that help uh, business owners to extend and develop their uh, websites without code and also designers as well by choosing few of your tools then you will also niche down and minimize to the people you want to work with in the same way because they will also want their solutions to be developed by those exact tools that you're using oftentimes I get asked okay but how do I present my offer how do I create my offer one thing I always tell everybody that are just starting with freelancing is to think about what they're selling and to think about it as like, okay, what information my client would need to know before buying from me and how do I answer these questions? You can make it as frequently asked questions and answer all these questions by creating the copy for your offer. Another approach is to also check other competitors uh, that are doing the same exact thing as you're doing and learn from them. Don't copy them, learn from them and see which kind of way and expression you like the most. Is it structured? Does it have the price included or it, it's not showing the price? Does that specialist also have some extras? How they describe their offer? Are you going to offer this kind of services or not? Just learn from what is out there and try to modify it and adjust it to your own offer and your own capabilities. Because when you create the offer, you have to then justify it with the price and your skills and prove that you can actually deliver what you have promised. So make sure that you have that in mind when you craft your own offer. One of my favorite steps is to create your own brand. Now, you have to think about uh, your messaging uh, your logo if you will mine is super simple i chose just the abbreviation of my name first and la last and first plus the uh, industry that i'm in design so it's angelova nicoleta design simple i chose a typeface that i liked and i created the logo easy as that i don't want to bother with all the details in branding and logo creation i just wanted to have something ready steady and straightforward so i can start selling my services and focus on what i'm uh, interested the most and that is creating strategic design solutions through ux in branding you can include also your uh, color choice and palette that you're going to use throughout your graphics on your website and social media presence branding is also the way you speak in your copy uh, or on your website in general in your blog posts how do you want to sound how do you want to look like which kind of fonts are you going to use in your work and uh, in your social media presentation. I have also created a short style guide branding template that you can actually see in the description below and check it out. It's for free. You can find it on my Gumroad uh, account and you can download it and check out all the examples and instructions and create your own brand with these steps. Let me know if it was helpful or not. And after that, you can focus on the messaging and the visual representation of your brand online. Why is branding important? Well, because when they want to work with you, they will probably Google your name. Trust me, they will. Even people who will like to collaborate with you, they will Google your name, your initials or your brand or your company name. So make sure you know how you look like on Google searches when people are searching for you. Most accurate representation of how you look like on Google search will be to open an incognito browser window and then search your own uh, initials for your brand name and then see what shows up as a content. Another important thing is if you have done a good SEO on, on your brand in your business, you'll see yourself on the top searches uh, very easily. So make sure you think about that when you craft your uh, content online. Now we are actually hunting for the clients. If you're just starting, I will suggest you do the internal staffing, like the company are doing it. They first tell their current employees inside the company to find them someone that answers the requirement they are looking for. So start with your inner circle, start with your friends, your families, relatives, acquaintances and people that you know from school, from university, teachers. I really recommend you reach out to some teachers and lecturers and people who really want you to succeed and support you during this career change. 
in uh, entrepreneurship path, reach out to those people and ask for them to recommend you or let you know if there's someone who is uh, looking for your actual title, job title, and uh, your service or product that you are offering. When you reach out to your inner circles, don't forget to practice your introduction, your pitch, and also what you do and how you do it. Make sure you make your explanation so simple that even a grandma and a kid that is five years old would know what you're actually doing and providing as a product or a service. Work on that storytelling and crafting and explaining what you do with examples and visualizing your solution to others. So they can easily explain it to other people what you do and how you help people. Important note, when you also talk about you and your business, make sure you mention a passion project or something that you're currently working on or you're excited about. Don't be idle and wait for opportunity to come along. Work on it and practice your skills and polish your knowledge by learning more and new things every single day, by reading books, taking tutorials and courses, making an example project of or a case study of what you do and what you can contribute to a project by showing up online and showing your work and projects that you're working on these passion projects will really show will really show that you are actually working on something and you are interested and dedicated to your field of work and after practicing your pitch uh, in real life it, or online with your with your circle inner circles it's time to show up online as well choose few platforms that you think your clients or collaborators because they can also refer you clients will be on the on these platforms don't spread too wide and too broad because you cannot manage all the accounts all in the same time and have the same presence everywhere make sure you choose two or three platforms that you will be consistent and maybe two two or three that you will show up every now and then. For example, when I want to showcase case studies or visually pleasing and finished products, I go to Behance and post my case studies there or if I have an idea or inspiration and go to Dribble every now and then and post there. But for consistency in uh, practicing my public speaking and pitching my offer, I go to Instagram every single day, for example, or create articles on medium where i flex my storytelling and practice my writing every single week when you start showing up online don't forget to go out and also join networking events and circles where people talk about business and sharing ideas and want to um, advance together so if you want to uh, reach out to more people and create more things you have to get to know the people and meet new people in real life as well one example is to go on a network event that is about your field for example design and meet people in those circles where you can talk about what you do and again practice your pitching and talk about your passion projects and your skills in particular Another way to uh, find opportunities is to go to educational courses and workshops in real life, free or paid, where you can mingle with people who are actually starting their own businesses as well. Because in those circles, you may be of help of someone who is also starting their business, but in a different branch or industry, and they might need your service. So try to see the gaps and fill in the gaps with your office offer and service without being too pushy or too aggressive when you pitch your uh, yourself. Most important part here to mention is help others, contribute, be active, share your opinion and expertise with others without expecting anything in return. This is the moment when everybody will see that you're really dedicated to what you do and they will see a potential in you. How I got my current client is exactly what happened. I didn't expect anything to happen from that networking event that I went to. I just wanted to learn more and connect with like-minded people. What happened is that few months left later, that organizer of the event called me and said, hey, I have a client who is in a search for a designer and I thought of you are you free and do you want me to connect you with the business owner and I was like yes of course I would love to talk with them and learn more about their project and how can I help them with that project so there we go talk to the people who are connected with many other people those people that are 
acting as the networking hubs are really useful by picking the right people and connecting them together so they can work together so make sure you expand your connections and treat everybody with respect i think the most important part of creating a real network business or friendship one is to have a genuine connection with the people that you are networking with make sure you have like a good foundations of trust and positivity in your relationship so that anything else can flourish naturally next part is really crucial as well leave your ego at home whenever opportunity comes at you especially in the beginning make sure you stay open-minded and accepting of these opportunities no matter how small they are because you have to start from somewhere and start proving yourself this is how we grow this is how we learn even good and bad clients can teach you something and their lessons can be quite valuable. But the bad clients actually can teach you even more about your service, about your process and who you want to work with and who you don't want to work with. So whenever an opportunity presents itself, analyze it, see what are the plus and minuses and see if you can actually achieve the desired goal and if you can, make sure that you take that opportunity and try to do your best while doing it. While all of your networking efforts are simmering and maybe you're waiting for something to happen based on these connections that you have created already, make sure you give the freelance platforms a go. Right now, the markets are really saturated, but don't be scared or discouraged to find your people and present your own services out there or products and try to find your own clients. Make sure you do a good research of each platform and what is required from the platform to succeed on it and make sure you implement all the branding, positioning, niching and offer descriptively in, on the platform and show up as yourself not like someone else and try to get as much as possible conversations going on in the beginning of your freelance career. The best advice here is to stay consistent and updated with the changes of each freelancing platform so you can guarantee that your profile stays relevant on the platform and appears in the searches. Something that I should mention here when you work on a freelance platform is that they are constantly changing and they have their own algorithms and rules so you have to stay updated and keep up with them. In terms of getting high return on investment when you create a profile or pay for their services means that you have to make sure your profile is up to date, your service is well polished and the way you present yourself is up to date to what they are expecting from their freelancers. Now we finally came to the portfolio. Because we mentioned some passion projects and projects that you were excited to develop for friends and family and inner circles, now it's time to build that portfolio with these case studies and projects. When creating your portfolio, have something in mind. You want to present projects that you're interested in getting in the future and also projects that you were actually experienced with. So, what you publish as a portfolio and case study is what you want to work more on and also what you're actually good at. So to make sure that your client is not confused about your offer, publish projects that actually reflect your desire for future work and your expertise in the same time. And last but not least, the form of cold reach out. If you see a problem and you see that you can fix it or suggest a solution on how to fix it, pitch yourself or take it as your own case study and create a thorough process and explanation of how you would approach this problem and how would you solve it. Don't be shy and try to polish your process and explain your design decisions in this example and make sure that you flex your creativity muscles during the process. And that's it! If you find this video useful, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below. Also leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. Also in the description below you can find the free brand style guide template that you can use yourself for your own brand. If you're not sure if you want to pursue a freelance career, maybe check out this video right here where I talk about the Revolut hiring process or maybe you're sure that you want to pursue your freelance design career and you want to see how I justify my design decisions, you can check my live streams. And if you're already a solopreneur yourself and you need a community of supportive individuals, make sure you check Work in Progress podcast. 
Thank you for your time and see you in the next one. Bye bye.